This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you in part by Telex, the interconnection company, owners and operators of 56 Marietta, the most network-rich co-location facility in the southeast. Tag TV and Tag Radio. Technology now has a voice of innovation and information. Get it on www.tagtvonline.com. Few could argue that it's been one of the most difficult economic years for the United States, for that matter, the world, since, well, World War II. Everyone is looking for signs of growth in 2010, but where? The staffing industry, believe it or not, is a very good place to start. That's right, the staffing industry, a coincident economic indicator and a leading employment indicator. The U.S. staffing industry, despite the current recession, is anticipating to grow faster and add more new jobs over the next decade than just about any other industry. Estimated by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the employment services industry, which is primarily staffing, is estimated to add 692,000 jobs between 2006 and 2016, making it the second largest growth industry in the United States. Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, January 12, 2010, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia, IT staffing and the economy. Just how well is the industry doing in general, and what are the trends, challenges, and opportunities for this high-growth industry sector right here in Georgia? The Tech Talk turns to the founder, and as he likes to call himself, assistant CEO of Thompson Technologies, David Thompson now a $30 million-plus leading provider of IT staffing solutions, headquartered here in Atlanta. The company was founded in the basement of his home just 15 years ago. A two-time Inc. 500 winner, recognizing America's fastest-growing privately-owned companies, David heads an organization known for a passion for excellence and uncompromising values. Throughout the years of exceedingly above-average industry growth, David is widely known for his strong faith in God to provide direction for his business. To that end, Thompson Technologies has a heavy focus on community service, partnering with organizations such as Hands On Atlanta, Habitat for Humanity, High Tech Ministries, Must Ministries, the United Way, and many, many others. For candidates, it's all about jobs, flexibility, a bridge to permanent employment, and training. Flexibility and access to talent are the benefits to the business client. IT staffing in the economy. The Tech Talk is all about the benefits staffing firms bring to lowering employment rates, enhancing productivity, and helping to build our economy's greater health right here in Atlanta for the future. As we go inside with one of the industry's leading providers, founder and assistant CEO of Thompson Technologies, David Thompson. David, uh, welcome to Tech Talk. Thanks, Frank. Glad to be here. Uh, probably uh, most of our listening audience already knows you're so active and been uh, such a prominent figure in the technology community for so many years. But let's start off, uh, I guess, for those that, who may not be aware of Thompson Technologies. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are up to. Sure. I uh, started the company almost 15 years ago. We celebrate our anniversary this March. And uh, my background's technical. I was a mainframe COBOL programmer, got my training in the Air Force many years ago, mm. and then kind of came up through the technical ranks and got involved in the IT staffing industry, uh, I guess it was in the late 80s. And uh, through some career moves, ended up in Atlanta in 1990, and uh, the door opened for me to start Thompson Technologies in uh, March of 1995, and it was just me. I started in my, uh, my home office, and uh, really uh, the charter was to provide – IT staffing consultants, uh, contract programmers, and uh, also help companies find full-time resources in the IT industry. And uh, as you may know, uh, mid-90s was a great time to start an IT staffing company. The, the demand was huge. Mm. So uh, I quickly blossomed and uh, had to hire some people. And I think before the end of the first year, we had six people working in my uh, unfinished basement <laughs> office where we started. And uh, the wife kicked us out to get some office space, too many cars in the driveway, and uh, we just took off. Uh, over the next 10 years, we grew to be a $30 million company and uh, national presence and Inc. 500 awards. And sure, two-time the, two yeah, winner, two if I'm not mistaken. And uh, pay centers, Atlanta pay centers, and Entrepreneur of the Year. And Atlanta all best of places awards. to work and on and on and on. Best places to work. Yeah, we've been very blessed and uh, have always – 
to strive to uh, differentiate and be able to provide value in a very crowded market here in Atlanta. But to answer your question, basically what we do is we provide IT uh, resources, human capital to companies that need to bring people in either short-term or long-term, either on a contract basis, uh, contract to full-time, or on a full-time basis, and that's our uh, primary bread and butter. Now, obviously, there isn't anybody that's listening that hasn't been impacted by change. I mean, it's almost gotten to be a cliche to talk about it, but also now rapid change. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess over the time period, now 15 years, uh, you've seen a lot of things happen in your field, in your industry. Uh, talk a little bit, especially now with the current economic challenges, uh, how's your company changed in, in order to effectively respond to candidates? Uh, great question, and uh, the one constant in this industry is change. So we uh, actually expect change, you know, with uh, new technologies coming out all the time and sure. changes in the economy. You know, it's just part of our business, and I think that's one of the reasons we've been successful is uh, uh, we do keep our ear close to the ground and versatile, flexible, adaptable, and, and change with the market. But uh, relative to the economy and, and responding to candidates, uh, it is a challenge, and a couple of things that we've done recently in response to that, we've uh, just implemented a brand-new applicant tracking system. Uh, we've been with uh, the same system for about the last 12 years and have gone through some upgrades with that, but uh, we outgrew that and have completely upgraded to a new system, which uh, really integrates uh, very nicely with our client requirements. Candidates have the ability now to update their own individual profiles, uh, we're interfaced with tools like Facebook and Twitter and, you know, a lot of the social networking sites. And uh, so that, that's been a big change for us and a, a big investment in training and uh, just uh, getting the software. The other thing that we did is uh, we've implemented a new delivery structure internally. Uh, one of the things that we've seen in the market is uh, the way the clients procure services from us is constantly changing. And in order to meet the demands of our clients and the candidates, uh, really put a different de delivery structure in place, which involves uh, bringing in some entry-level people and training them on, uh, to do basic sourcing. And that's kind of a first step into our company to get into a technical recruiting role or potentially even into a sales role if that's the career path they desired. But uh, those are two big changes that we've recently made for 2010 uh, that are in production now, and we've already seen some great response to that and uh, improvement in those internal areas. Well, obviously, you're, you're constantly in touch with the marketplace on both sides, both the, uh, uh, the clients uh, as far as the service and their quality expectations are concerned. Um, any anticipation on the part of those clients as far as change in, in 2010? You know, one of the things that we hear so much about is a jobless recovery, a jobless mm -hmm. recovery, and uh, talking about the Excuse me. The impact of technology. You mentioned some things like social media, and collaboration and communication platforms. Uh, so much change going on. What about the anticipation from the clients as far as expectations are concerned? Yeah, uh, from a service and quality standpoint, it's kind of interesting because uh, the client's expectations have not changed. Uh, the trend always seems to be that the clients want more for less. Oh, right? you're kidding. So what else is new, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> so that's uh, only in your industry, though. Yeah, right. So anyway, service and quality has always been a priority for my company, and really our reputation and culture, what it is today, has been built over the years based on that. We've always done, a, done an exceptionally well job servicing our clients and providing a culture internally to attract good people and to keep good people, and uh, so that doesn't change. What we've really had to look at is just uh, the means to uh, deliver faster. You know, uh, one of the things that we're seeing from our clients is a, a lot of automated procurement processes coming in place, vendor management systems, mm. you know, a lot of technology replacing uh, what used to be calling and just uh, dealing with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and understanding their model and their needs. So a lot of that's becoming automated. So, uh, you know, we've had to adjust internally to support that, but uh, I think overall we've done a really good job. Like I said, we've always been focused on service and quality, and we're always looking at ways of improving, but that is, I think, one of our strengths. So. Uh, and I think that's given us, uh, put us in the position in the market that we are today as a result of that. Now, you've touched upon some of the technical trends. Uh, I know that uh, uh, my guess with outsourcing and outtasking and, and uh, the, the level now of uh, cloud activity where you can buy by the drink, and yep. uh, I'm sure that you're aware of this. I think it's Amazon Turk that's uh, mm -hmm. talking about uh, buying services by the minute, I think, or yep. something. I'm not even sure I read about it, and I, after I read it, I thought, 
my God, what are they talking about? I don't even understand it. But uh, tell us a little bit from your perspective, what are some of the technical trends you're seeing? Well, as you know, uh, that, that's what's a constant change in our industry is technology and, uh, you know, faster, uh, you know, just, you know, more memory. I mean, just really mm-hmm. everything continues to change. But from an overall perspective, what we're seeing, at least from our clients, we're seeing a big uh, demand for business intelligence and reporting, uh, you know, as it relates to customer service and sales and cost-cutting measures. You know, companies are really looking to be a lot more proactive in this market instead of reactive. And we've seen that trend over the last several years, and it's really, really becoming a focus for CIOs and leaders of technology organizations and our clients. Uh, So we're seeing a lot of demands in that area, business intelligence, Web 2.0, I mentioned that, interactive web technologies, uh, demand for open source techies like Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. things like Linux and Apache and MySQL and PHP, things like that we're seeing a big demand for. Uh, Another thing that we're seeing is you remember when – the big craze with e-commerce hit back in the late 90s, and everybody had to get on the web, sure. and they had to be selling. Well, we're seeing a new trend now where e-commerce meets mobile apps, mm-hmm. you know, like the iPod and uh, the Droid and these things. So we're seeing uh, companies that are really focusing a lot of energy in that effort to develop their e-commerce applications. So. Uh, they do interface with the mobile applications, and that will continue to be the trend. Uh, what we're also seeing, seeing from a technology standpoint is really over the last year uh, with the economy, uh, you know, where it was and a lot of people laying off and just really nervous about direction, there was a lot of projects that were put on hold. Sure. And uh, now what we're seeing is a lot of the, the funds are being released for those projects. So ERP upgrades and integrations that were on the back burner with PeopleSoft and Oracle and SAP and uh, Microsoft, those projects are now starting to kick off. And a lot of development projects uh, that were kind of on the back burner. So we're seeing a lot of demand for, you know, basic development skills, .NET, Java, you know, things like that. So well, that activity is picking up. And that's great news. That's yeah, great news. I mean, I'm sure you're – thing like 20 to 30 people a month pretty consistently. And, yeah. and I would say you guys have got to be an early barometer in terms of uh, – an indication of some kind of turnaround. I mean, I, I you know, I, 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 not to delve into the, as they say, into the weeds as far as the economy and getting into economics, but I think there are a lot of people, and I would be interested in your opinion, is is that it is going to come back, but not necessarily come back the way it was. It's going to come exactly. back in a that, different configuration. And we're seeing that uh, absolutely. And, you know, kind of the difference that we're seeing now is we our, our buyers are much more educated mm-hmm. than they were in the past. And, uh, you know, now the, we're, we're seeing them bringing in resources internally. We're actually placing contract recruiters with our clients that want to bring this in-house. And, uh, you know, about that? You know the re- re- recruiting process outsourcing, uh, we have opportunities in that area as well. This is a little bit off mark, but I got to ask it. I'm kind of curious. I mean, how do things like employee loyalty and that kind of stuff does that play anymore? I mean, as far yeah. as you know, uh, um, I'm an entrepreneur. I know you are, obviously, mm-hmm. from your great success. But uh, you know, part of it's kind of been like your family, you know, and you grow mm-hmm. and and you know the people from day one that you brought in and that kind of thing. I guess it sounds a little old school, but is that inherent in, in this kind of activity? Do you still are get you talking that? about internally with us or with our clients? Or no, what? with the, with the clients. Well, I guess I, I I certainly know the values that you guys stand for. So I'm going to guess internally. No, that's not the issue. But externally, as it relates to the people that you bring to the table yep. and what the expectation is on the client part of it, or do they really care about it as long yeah, as you're doing your that's job? that's a great question way? because, uh, you know, back in the day, it wasn't uncommon to take a job with a corporation and spend most or all of your career there and retire, sure. and uh, that's not the way it is today, and candidates know that, and clients uh, also are in that uh, same boat. They're not really looking for lifers, if you will. Uh, but they have some specific business objectives, and uh, the candidates do as well in terms of what their career goals are. And what we're seeing now is more of a trend, especially with uh, uh, more of the junior and entry-level people that are coming into the market and how they're being trained out of school and their first few jobs. They're looking for those consulting opportunities and uh, Mm -hmm. kind of uh, are excited about the opportunity to maybe spend – six months or a year on a project and then maybe take some downtime and uh, and look for their next gig. So uh, we're seeing a lot more of the technical people that are entering into the market be more specialized uh, in areas like uh, project management and uh, mm-hmm. business analyst and uh, 
business and, and understand the va- understand the value of that talent as a tradable resource rather than employment. I mean, in terms of their absolutely. health, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. And and again, I, I guess you know uh, another curiosity just in this area is how in the world do you can't stay on top of the trends? You can't possibly be reactive, so you've got to be. Right building your it's both your, I mean, we uh, have to be reactive to some extent because we never know what's going to come in on a day-to-day basis from our clients sure. and what the 911 calls are going to be so but how quickly you can always in our industry of being reactive but certainly you know one of the things that we've done here uh, for 2010 is uh, we have really evaluated our clients and broken them into different groups tier one tier two tier three based on opportunity and where, where we feel we're best qualified to help and for all of our Tier 1 accounts and our Tier 2 accounts, we have a client executive sponsor internally, and uh, I'm the client executive sponsor for several accounts. And uh, we're really meeting with our clients and trying to understand where their business is going and meeting with their CXOs and trying to understand okay. what their key initiatives are and trying to sync up with them from not only a value-add perspective, but making sure our pipeline is full of the right type of people that they're going to be hiring over the course of a year. And we're being much more proactive now than we were in the past in that area. Now this kind of segues into the next question. I, uh, how do you pro- what? How do you ensure that you're providing the appropriate value? And and I guess is it a case where can you actually say in some cases Thompson Technologies is unique or different than yeah, other players? Yeah, I, I say so. Uh, certainly, in a much smaller uh, uh, group of competitors, I would say we have some good competitors in the marketplace. Uh, the IT staffing industry is uh, very competitive, especially here in Atlanta. There's probably hundreds of companies. Uh, that do what we do to some level or another. So what we really strive to do is to always be able to provide value, and that's since day one. But to give you some concrete uh, steps that we take, I, I don't. We're not a body shop. You know, there there are there's a place for companies out there that you know take resumes off the job boards and just submit them blindly to their customers. And uh, you know, there is a place for those type of companies in the market. And but we're not one of them. Uh, we look to develop relationships with our clients again and understand what their business needs are and mm-hmm. making sure we're not wasting anybody's time, especially our own internally. So uh, we are focused on really that's a big part of what we do. But some of the more concrete things we do as far as providing value, we do monthly roundtables. Uh, we do them here in our office, and we also do them at our client sites. And we invite the leaders from the community, from you know the CXOs that are involved in IT, uh, as well as our client leaders, and we bring in facilitators to talk about business intelligence or Web 2.0 or whatever the need is, and we'll tailor something specifically for our clients. So that is an area that we've uh, had going now for over a year, and it's been very successful and part of our uh, relationship building. Uh, we also are very active in uh, community service. We have events uh, scheduled every quarter. Uh, with things like Must Ministries and Hands on Atlanta and Habitat for Humanity. And we also partner with our clients and with our uh, billable associates that work for us Mm -hmm. and get them involved as well. And I think that's another differentiator. I think people really, especially in today's uh, world, are looking to give back and to help others that are in need. And that's part of our culture uh, here at Thompson Technologies. always has been since I started the company. Uh, my title is assistant CEO of the company because I named uh, I named God as my CEO when I started the company. So it's a faith-based company, at least from my perspective, and I really rely on God for direction. And well, uh, as you were talking about the roundtables, I was thinking, you, you, you know, the uh, Bible says about uh, you don't receive because you don't ask. So I mean, yeah, if you're out there yeah. asking. I, I like that. I got and, it. And another biblical principle. I mean, we've been very blessed, but we haven't been blessed. Uh, to hoard it all, we, we're blessed to help others. That's great. So that's a, that's another biblical principle that everybody here is on board in. So that's another example. But uh, you know, and I'll give you another example. Uh, we have a full-time relationship manager whose sole responsibility is around client and associate satisfaction. So this starts with the proper onboarding of new staff, regularly scheduled communications and meetings to get feedback, mm. discussing projects. We recognize our associates' birthdays, their anniversaries, new babies, weddings. We have a big Christmas party, huge picnic in the summer. So we're a real company that people, you know, like to participate in. We have a lot of loyalty from people that we have work for us uh, that want to stay working for us, and we do a great job of reengaging people uh, to keep them long term. Uh, so you know, again, it's been developed over the years, but I think we've done. A okay, lot of so great so okay, David. So where do I sign up? 
because it sounds like I want. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, internally we have a chair masseuse that comes in. Oh, like wait a minute! Yeah. And Enough already, please. I just stop. announced our uh, chairman circle awards uh, on Friday. We're taking a group to Puerto Vallarta in April uh, for a top performer. So, uh, which well, is uh, you know going back to uh, kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, it's just part of our life here. Part well, of, you know, it, and it, it sounds it, – part of the reason why I think that the recognition and, and certainly the brand now, and if you want to – I almost want to, don't want to minimize it, but Thompson Technologies has been be, been so much associated with so many of the things that you're describing. It's You either know all those things and are familiar with it because you are so active or you just haven't heard of, about you yet, and that's kind of even hard to believe. But um, we're running out of time. i got to ask you one great question because you're okay. sitting on top of so much information and, and so connected to the marketplace – both now and obviously projecting into the future, what's next? You know, what's next for you? What's next for Thompson Technologies? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, as far as the company is concerned, we have a very aggressive uh, growth plan in place for 2510. Uh, I'm 20, 2510. How about 2010? Uh, to grow around 35%. Uh, we feel that we can do that. We've got an amazing team here of sales, recruiting, support people. Uh, there's 20 people in this office, and over half of them have been with me for more than five years now. Uh, one started with me in my basement office 14 years ago. Mm. And uh, so I'm very involved uh, from a business standpoint still in uh, sales and business development and, uh, you know, networking events and certainly the, the day-to-day operations. Uh, but I personally, I'm uh, also very involved in uh, high-tech ministries. I'm on the board of directors and actually will be kicking off the first annual golf tournament, uh, which will be held May 24th at the Standard Club. So uh, hopefully you'll hear more about that soon. Uh, I also have three grandkids so far, and uh, I'm a young grandpa. I'm 52 and just really enjoying that new chapter in my life. And, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time in Mexico. We have a vacation home in Puerto Vallarta. I kind of joked about it before, but uh, I'm probably spending 20% of my time there. And uh, just got back Friday and landed in the snowstorm here in Atlanta. And I uh, wish I could have still in Mexico. But uh, I'm blessed, again, with a very good leadership team. Tim Smith, my president. Mark Gannon, my vice president of delivery. Uh, Ari Waller, my director of recruiting, has been with me for 14 years. And i got a great team here. And, uh, you know, wherever, whether I'm here or in Mexico, uh, I'm plugged in. And uh, it's just an exciting chapter in my life. And a very well-balanced part, uh, very a lot of balance in my life right now, which is good. Well, David, you know, one of the things that, that you have to deal in is so much about what you're doing, it deals in trust and to know the kind of character and the kind of individual that you, the life that you're leading and the way that uh, you're practicing your beliefs and, and your faith is, uh, I'm sure, uh, is uh, uh, provides or validates a lot of that trust that's necessary and certainly warrants why you've been so successful. We've been visiting with Dave Thompson, David, founder and assistant CEO. And, of course, if those who have been listening, we know who the CEO is of Thompson Technologies. Uh, David, thank you so much for joining us today on Tech Talk. Hey, Frank, it was a blast. I enjoyed talking with you, and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.